going on my dudes tyser here and of course we are here for the 1.3 live reaction special live stream and yes I'm very excited for this. Of course, we know that there's going to be three characters with Imbibitor Luna, Fushuan, and of course, Lynx being the new four-star healer. And obviously, we're really, really excited for this. I want to know what's going on. And this is coming off the coattails of Fontaine just being released for Genshin Impact. So I'm pretty excited. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, of course, as you can see, we are still waiting. Uh, let me turn on chat. There you go, chat. There you go. Didn't want to, didn't want to lose y'all there. But yes, here we go. We're starting. Let's hear it. This program is brought to you by the by the international or inter inter. Uh, yeah, you get what I'm saying. It's fortunate I could make it. My divination results predicted you making a fool of yourself. The what? show is about to start. Make sure you remember these words. You wouldn't want to tarnish the CN Joe's reputation now, would you? No, Master Diviner. After me, Fulgrant Leap. Fulgrant Leap. Fulgrant Leap. Apical Spectrum. Orem Alley's Hustle and Bustle. Orem Alley's Hustle and Bustle. Oh shit, my bad. The Swarm Disaster. The yeah. Swarm Disaster. It's all good, Ultra. It's all good. Audience. It's all good. Not bad. Make sure you recite them a few more times. Okay, so what is the what is this whole thing? Master Diviner. What is it now? How do you say this one? <sighs> High Cloud Quintet. <laughs> what is Imbibitor doing? Alright, here we go. Trailer. Trailer time. Let's go. We honor those who have passed on. You cog! Oh, there she is! Oh, that's such a crazy good shot. To shine brightly among them. Okay. Before you leave, please make time to recuperate. Bushuan, there we go. See you. I must attend to some cloud night matters. Farewell for now. Oh yeah, let's go. Okay. Drip in effect. Heck yeah, I'm super stoked for her. And then Imbibitor, there we go. You witnessed my secret strength, as March would call it. As you can see, we added a few things to this Ooh. simulated universe. Okay, we are getting a simulated universe update. Thinks this is a big achievement. Oh, more curios. Okay, we're getting more curios. Okay. There's Link! Stay! That was adorable. Okay, okay. What the heck? Okay, that was... That was pretty cool. But I wanted to... Okay. Here we go. First redemption code right here. First redemption code right here. We're going to type this in. Guys, how about that? How? What do you think about that? I wouldn't say it was the hypest trailer per se, but I will say, I will say that it was pretty dope. I'm kind of interested at what the first, like what the, what the first, or that, what the simulated universe updates are going to be. Don't balk me. Come on. Come on. We're doing a recording here. We do, we're doing a recording here. We don't bonk here. What are you doing? What are you doing? We're gonna we're gonna pause blurp for a second. <laughs> but I am pretty I'm pretty interested in like what the new update is. Like in regards to simulated universe. Oh shit. Good morning, good afternoon, and you know the rest. Welcome to the version 1.3 Celestial Eyes Above Mortal. I love that picture, like in general. It looks super sick. And I'm really, really glad that we're going to be getting more uh, um, Yukog. Yes, his name is Bill Butts. Hi, everyone. I'm 
I'm Sarah Wiedenheft, and I voice Fu Xuan. What's up, guys? I'm Anjali Kunipanani, and I voice Su Xiong. Hey, Trailblazers. I'm Nicholas Leung, and I voice Dan Hong. Dan Hong. Welcome, welcome, and welcome again. <laughs> I gotta say, that trailer was loaded with details on the new version. <laughs> It was loaded with details, but I want to know exactly what those details are. I don't know why that that trailer didn't hit me as hard. That segment caught my eye too. The swarm disaster was that it. It looked pretty intense. I know. Did her to upgrade the simulated universe again? You know, my trailblazer senses are tingling. What the? The simulated. The cringe is real, bro. But we love them. We love the voice actors. Send love to the voice actors. First. Let's take a look at the new characters joining the world. Absolutely, as we always should. And finally revealing his true power. Yeah. We have Don Hung, Imbibitor Lune. Imbibitor Lune. I'm sorry. It just looks so dope. Just giving him a tail and, and like, antlers. Like, bro, he's a... He's a... He's, I, I I had a joke and I'm not gonna say it, but yes, he looks super sick. Whoa, okay. That looks so. So March wasn't bluffing. Don Hong does have secret strength. He does have but, secret. See, why would he my hair he gives me super strength. Uh, let's not forget he did get impaled. <laughs> He yeah, did. I think if he'd kept it under wraps any longer, he might have had trouble uh, staying alive. <laughs> you know, desperate times, desperate measures. Okay, it makes sense, but why the secrecy up till then? Well, to answer that question, we gotta talk about Don Hung's previous incarnation. Uh -huh. Don Fung. Don Fung, baby. That's right. I'm sure Trailblazers will have noticed that certain characters in the story have been referring to Don Hung as Imbibitor Lune. But Imbibitor Lune is actually a title handed down as part of the Law Fu Vidyadara High Elder Succession. The person they're referring to here isn't Don Hung, but Don Fung. Okay. Don Fung was once the Law Fu Vidyadara High Elder. He achieved great deeds for the Xianzhou in wartime, but ultimately committed an unforgivable sin. What was the oh, sin? Wait, but if Don Hung's still alive, then Don Fung's sin can't have been that unforgivable, right? Mm, I think someone pulled a few strings. <laughs> There's only one guy in the law of food who risked the Xianzhou's reputation like that. Jing Yuan. Oh, Jing Yuan, baby. I told you, Albert. <laughs> I never knew owls were so gossipy. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Jing Yuan's not to blame this time. The head of the Xianzhou Vidyadara, the High Elder, possesses the power to transform into a dragon. The method of entrusting this power to the next head is a closely guarded secret and the responsibility of each High Elder. Uh -huh. We don't know the full story, but... Don Fung misused this method and sparked a terrible calamity. As a result, the Vidyadara grew to hate Don Fung, but executing him would have brought an end to the High Elder succession. They decided to use an exuviation charm, forcing him to reincarnate. Which is why Don Hung is alive and well today. Mm. The world of the Vidyadara is complicated it is very complicated i was very silent throughout the whole thing trying to understand it so apparently don fung liked to do a lot of crazy shit and uh then the low fu was like nah we ain't having it so we're gonna force you to reincarnate and then don hung is like boom here i am as an imaginary type character following the path of destruction, Don Hung and Bibiter Lune's specialty is consuming multiple skill points to trigger an array of powerful abilities. Tapping the skill button enhances the effects of Imbibitor Lune's basic attack, Beneficent Lotus, up to three times in succession. Depending oh, shoot. on the number of enhancements, Beneficent Lotus becomes Transcendent, Divine Spear, and Fulgurant Leap, respectively. Hits per action and damage dealt increase. I have used that and it was freaking sick. Single target damage is replaced with multiple target damage in both Divine Spear and Fulgurant Leap. 
And in Barbara Lunay's talent, Righteous Heart. Amplified it is pretty dope, but you're sacrificing a lot of skill points to get the damage off. So you have to see if you're... Pretty important for Mbibber Exactly as they're saying. Skill point management is a big thing. When using his ultimate, Mbibber de Lune deals imaginary damage to a single target and adjacent enemies, while also receiving a set amount of Squama Sacrosancta. Squama Sacrosancta can be used to offset Mbibber de Lune's skill point consumption. Man, secret okay. Don Hung is kind of a one-man band. Oh, that's not all. <laughs> Mbibber de Lune's technique, Heaven Quelling Prisma Draken, allows him to enter a leaping dragon state for a set time. In this state, using an attack causes Mbibber de Lune to lunge forwards a set distance and strike all enemies he comes into contact with. Entering battle in this okay. way allows Mbiber de Lune to acquire a set amount of Squama Sacrosancta. And lo, such is the frightful power of the High Elder. <laughs> okay. So there's there's ways to offset it, but I don't think it's going to be like... It, I don't think it's going to be a crazy amount to actually be able to do that. You're probably going to want to get ERR very high. All right, Fushuen, let's go. Let's see it. Pink Kokomi. Let's go. Hold on, I gotta check the... Let's see. Yeah, it's it's up to the highest it should be. Alright. This look... <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but the, oh, that looks dope, but that whole oh, thing looked like a giant, like, YouTube ad. Was pretty impressive. Pink pissed and small kokomi. Exactly. Came the words. Your every move has been foreseen by the Omnisia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that that was that was kind of adorable. I wonder how'd she fare against a star not though. <laughs> oh yeah, I can't see her swatting one of those out of the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Fushuin might have something to say about that. Oh, okay. Our hexagrammatic position is oh my God, there's so much stuff. Earth and water trigrams. What do we have to fear? Let us counter this menace directly with the might of the Sienjo. Uh -huh. Oh, Sisheng translation. Hexagram says let's do this. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think what the heck? Would benefit from having okay. As a translator. Yeah. So this is this is pretty adorable. The Omnisia on Fushwin's But I want to know the abilities. Come on, let's get to the abilities. allows her to calculate her every move in advance. Mm -hmm. However, the immortal bodies of the Sienjo natives exhibit adverse reactions to external augmentation. While the Omnisia may grant her incredible computational abilities, it also causes her pain and exhaustion. Uh, well, with great power, uh, you know the rest. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to make that Spider-Man reference, do you, Imbibiter? She drinks like ten cups of Immortals Delight a day. Uh, no. Hey, that sounds like gossip to me. What if Immortals Delight is just heckin' delicious? <laughs> <laughs> I suspect it is. Though I'm sure the sugar helps. Running the Divination Commission and divining the fortunes of the Sienjo, it's an exhausting gig. Alright, Anjali's right. No more bubble tea gossip. By way of Dude, I love tea. bubble tea. Why can't we gossip about tea, bubble tea? Ten cups of Immortals Delight after the show. <gasps> yes! <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> let's talk about Boba Tea later. It's time to take Yes, let's talk about Boba Tea later. later. Showcases we're already on the battlefield. We're already 13 Show minutes into the recording. Okay, let's see this. Following the path of preservation. Okay. Where other path of preservation characters mainly use shields for defense, Fu Xuan takes a different road. Precisely. After using her skill, Fushwin activates the Matrix of Prescience, which lasts for a set number of turns. Uh -huh. This allows Fushwin to absorb some of that damage for her allies. Okay. When the Matrix of Prescience is active, it grants the knowledge effect to the entire team. So you really want to buff up that defense and HP. And crit rate. Fushwin's talent offers a variety of effects. Firstly, Fushwin can provide a permanent misfortune avoidance state reducing the damage taken by the entire team. Secondly, when Fushwin's HP drops below a set percentage, she recovers a set percentage of HP. POV, you're Fushwin's enemy. Why are my attacks healing her? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's actually pretty Fushwin's dope though. deals quantum damage to all enemies, but it also increases the frequency of her talent's HP restoration effect. 
Oh, and I almost forgot to mention. Okay. The Schwinn's technique can grant a barrier for the whole team that lasts for a set duration. During exploration, the barrier blocks all enemy attacks. There we go. Battles that would otherwise have triggered in this way. Her technique also activates the matrix of prescience automatically at the start of the. Next okay, that's pretty sick. I'm pretty sick. Or that's pretty sick. I can't wait to actually try Fu Shun. I think that honestly could be really, really dope. Styles very different to Jing Yuan's, but being a defensive backbone for her team is equally respectable. I don't know how it like, cause Pi Fire Trailblazer is really, really good for an MC. I'm, I'm really curious. Like bumping up her HP and defense is probably gonna be really good. Links Landau. Links Landau, let's go. Oh, she's so cute, dude. She has a pickaxe. She's from Minecraft, bro. And she just brings out sardines and a giant pill. Popping pills, baby. Is her name ring a bell? <laughs> you got it. She's the younger sister of Serval and Japard Landau. You know, is it just me or should everyone in the overworld be taking she... tips from Lynx? She's the only person I've seen okay. to rest for the eternal freeze. <laughs> she re she reminds you of characters from Yudu Camp? I have no idea what Yudu Camp is. <laughs> I think those geo marrow heaters keep but she does look really cute i, I like her design it's a very cozy design very cozy gear is for venturing outside the city right mm -hmm. you got it lynx has always been drawn to the horizon the centuries old records of yurilo six's vibrant past the beautiful auroras described by her teachers the heroic tales of the landau family <laughs> all of it pertains to the world beyond the city walls with the Bellabogians call the Snow Plains. Uh -huh. Compared with her sister's enthusiasm and her brother's seriousness, Lynx is somewhat introverted and comfortable with solitude. Uh -huh. She often ventures out alone into the perilous Snow Plains, which has allowed her to hone her wilderness survival skills. Ooh, she's gonna be the world's smallest survival expert. I know. <laughs> the world's smallest survival expert? Maybe small. All right, I have... I have to go. I'm oh, sorry. BRB. Just how powerful this snow plains explore really is. <laughs> yeah. Lynx is a quantum type character following the path of abundance who provides a variety of healing for her team. Her skill can restore HP to a single ally and grant them survival response for a set number of turns, boosting their max HP. If an ally with survival response follows the paths of destruction or preservation, the likelihood of them being targeted by enemy attacks increases. Ah, increased enemy aggression? Guess they're not fans of whatever's in that tin. <laughs> uh, uh, can't say that I blame them. <laughs> my, 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 that looks like fermented heron? Oh, it's my favorite. You guys want to try some? Ah, uh, no, 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 I'm good. No. Uh, can you forget about the contents of the tin? This is a useful ability. I'll say this. Directing enemy aggression towards characters who can take a hit is kind of genius. Does she have any edible tricks up her sleeve? Uh, this one looks safe for consumption. Lynx's ultimate restores health to and dispels one debuff from each ally. <laughs> You just <laughs> I know. You know. Talk about a hard pill to swallow, huh? Eh? Yeah. Anyone? Anyone? Uh -huh. Sarah? Sarah? No? I'm just, See, I'm okay. just wondering how she even fits it in her backpack. <sighs> Sometimes. Okay, chat. Really sorry about that. I'm, I'm missing out on the freaking stuff. I'm sorry. It can grant a continuous healing effect to targets of her skill and ultimate for a set number of turns. Okay. This effect will further restore a set amount of HP to characters with survival response. Oh, okay. So it's based on turn. Also grant a continuous healing effect for a set number of turns, but to the entire team. Okay. A reliable healer. That's that's pretty sick. I'll have to go over it again before the end of the stream because I do apologize. Like I didn't, I wasn't trying to lose it. Well, that concludes our new character introduction. Okay, I thought they were gonna conclude everything. I was like, wait, what? Brand new five star light cones coming to the warp in version one point three. Let's go. How about a path of destruction, light cone? Right that looks so sick, though. 
Is there anything brighter than the sun? Uh, if there is, we should tell Imbibiter Lunay about it. Someone needs some vitamin D. Hey, vitamin D's come nuts. On. He's looking pretty good for a man suspended in chains. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> These perverts, man. These perverts. Fair point. Now, on to a path of preservation. Oh, I love that light cone. It looks so dope. Everything changed in an instant. Thrown suddenly into an endless reliance on bubble tea. Oh, uh, speaking of bubble tea, <laughs> Albert, uh, any chance we can uh, fast track that offer? <laughs> okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I do want some bubble tea now. <laughs> now, during the first phase of version 1.3. Okay, cool. Yukon coming back. Asta and a March 7th. That's actually not a bad banner. That's not a bad banner in the slightest. That is definitely not a bad banner. Yukon, Pog. Asta has been in a couple banners, but still Pog in the March 7th. Okay, so Lynx is going to come out with Fushuan, with Hook and Pella. Actually, pretty dang good. Good healer, good AOE damage dealer. You got a debuffer, and you get fish one. That's pretty dope. The drop rate of the five-star light cone. She already shut her eyes. Will be boosted. <laughs> and that's all she wrote on light cones and warps. Okay, those are some really, really good banners. I do, I do like the balance of the banners. All right. Let's go ahead and get this new code in here. I gotta type the new code. But yes, that is pretty pog. I do apologize for having to leave. Um, I had a moment where I didn't know if uh, my, uh, my I, I didn't know I was gonna make it, to be quite honest with you. I've been holding it in. I was like, I could get this. I could get this. I could get this, but nope, I can't. I cannot get it. I couldn't. So I had to, I had to hurry up, but. Yes, Fushuan right here right now looks pretty decent. I don't know if Fushuan's going to be that like one that takes over the uh, fire trailblazer. I hope so, though, because from what it looks like, she has a lot of potential, especially as a healer. Now, we do have Imbibitor or Imbibitor. Imbibitor looks like he's going to be a lot of fun, but it's a lot of skill point management. So if you have a team that manages skill points, you're not gonna, you're not going to be able to team him up with Yukong, it looks like. Because it's going to cost you a lot of skill points. So. Welcome back, dear viewers. Let's pick up where we left off. And then Lynx looks like a looks like a decent healer. Thanks to the collaborative efforts of Jing Yuan and Don Hung, Fantilia was banished and the Ambrosial Arbor crisis was resolved. Mm -hmm. and yet, as the dust settles, easing the fears of the citizenry becomes a new priority. Rightly so. Helping people get back to their old lives mm -hmm. is a big part of rebuilding. Yes. And, and there's Yukong in the background, so I'm a happy boy. Trickier than preventing one. Did I mention I'm a big uh, Yukong fan? The Trailblaze mission Obsequies performed, a long road ahead, will reveal a glimpse of the Xianzhou's recovery efforts. We'll also be seeing we get the likes of four companion the missions? The Dragon Returns Home, Total Recall. Farther than the Snow Plains and Mohashle. In the Dragon Returns Home, we find Don Hung in the turbulent wake. We get four of them? He must face up to- Hey yo! Okay, that's pretty fun. That's a lot- that's a lot of Stellar Jade. Meanwhile, in Total Recall, March 7th makes a big decision. Having witnessed the wonders of the Matrix of Prescience Ultima, she decides to ask Fu Xuan for the Matrix's help in rediscovering her past. Oh, sh Farther than the Snow Plains focuses on the youngest member of the Landau family. Lynx returns from an expedition with something troubling her, and her siblings, Serval and Jepard, are at a loss to help. They decide to seek the assistance of none other than the Trailblazer. And last but not least, Mohashle. Wildfire member and Fight Club reigning champion Luca has returned. These stories seem like they're actually going to be pretty he dope. No time in inviting the Trailblazer and Zila to help him in completing a special bout of trading. Ooh, a nice cinematic read there, Albert. I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> oh, those names are so intriguing. I feel like these missions will answer a lot of questions. Like, why is Bailu the current Vidyadra High Elder? And is March 7th truly as many people suspect? <laughs> this is hardly the domain of Unverified. Oh, Ours snap. This is a serious program. Serious? <laughs> more like Bubble Tea Gossip Central. Uh, oh, speaking of Bubble Tea, yeah. we need more bubble tea, baby! Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I will always take more boba tea. We'll be talking version one. We're getting a free sushang. Okay. Okay. Pog. Pog though. But has gradually fallen into obscurity over the last millennium. The blink of an eye for a long life species. And now, as the IPC's corporate interference encroaches upon the Lao Fu, the people sense danger and are striving to breathe new life into old trades. In the Orem Alley's hustle and bustle event, trailblazers are thrown right okay. in action with an opportunity to influence the Alley's ultimate fate. Oh, let's see, let's see. Come on. What do we need to do exactly? Give us everything, because we are getting a lot of stuff from this event. So it's probably going to be a large event, like large. Planning logistics routes. Trailblazers can accumulate funds. These funds. Yep. So it's exactly like the museum event. It's going to be a long-standing event. I actually kind of like it. Limited time event. Players can earn self-modeling resin, tracks of destiny, stellar jade, and four-star character Sushan. Let's go. This limited time event, Oramali will remain in the game as a permanent mode. Oh. This mode includes rewards such as the Oramali themed phone wallpaper, Ingenium Dreams. What? Ooh. That's something we haven't seen before. That's right. oh, okay. Phone wallpapers are a new feature being added to version 1.3. Trailblazers can browse. Okay then. Okay then. More customization. So That's awesome. There's no. There's always something good for customization. It's time to talk about a big update to the simulated universe. Okay. Uh, finally, I thought for a moment you might have accidentally left it out. <laughs> the cheek. How could I? Your we're getting a lot of self-molding resin too, so that's pretty big. Especially since we're trying to make better, like, better art, like relics. So yeah. The update is the collaborative effort of four genius minds. They call it Simulated Universe: The Swarm Disaster. Mm -hmm. They completed a broad spectrum of structural renovations purely to investigate the fall of an eon. The swarm disaster. It sounds like it might have something to do with the. Uh, mm, what is that Eon's name again? Tazy something? Taseroth. The Eon. Taseroth. It's, it's like hearing the name Taserface. Interesting. Well, what it's not intimidating. To research the Imperator Insectorum. Ooh, I'll tell you. <laughs> From the story so far, We've heard that the propagation once caused a major swarm which spread throughout the universe. This eventually caught the attention of multiple eons who united to eradicate it. Uh -huh. This event involved more eons than any other recorded event in history, which of course makes it an excellent research subject. Hmm, so that's how it is. Mm-hmm. In order to delve into this complicated history, oh. Herda and her team have developed various new methods. I'm kind okay. I'm it's kind of on the edge of my seat here. The swarm disaster. The stage maps will appear in a format similar to a chessboard. Okay. Challenges will need to navigate through randomly generated domains and tackle a variety of challenges before making it to the deepest parts of the simulation. I'm assuming these geniuses had more in mind than simply maneuvering around a grid. Right you are. In order to simulate the experiences of different path striders and resonate with the eons, a brilliant mind named Steven developed the audience die and commuting device. Oh, okay. Die? Oh, come on, Albert. That's not a nice thing to say to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> die as in singular for dice. Okay, uh, okay. It has to do with the eons bestowing random gifts upon path striders. What the? the this is concern, so like intricate. It looks like. Roll the audience die. This will generate special effects for the current turn. These special effects might provide our team with powerful buffs okay. or alter the chessboard in some way. Okay, this uh, this could be actually pretty sick. This is like, I love how Honkai will go out of its way to make different freaking types of events. Like this is really like intricate and it looks interesting. Each exploration will encompass three planes corresponding to Imperator Insectorum's emergence, expansion, and demise. Okay. Trailblazers will encounter simulated historical events during these phases, and different responses will lead to different outcomes. But 
Do these simulations really recreate the truth? The official response is that due to the many historical unknowns, all potential outcomes are valuable. The data helps us infer the most probable truth. And the unofficial response? Mm, Madam Herta said, and I quote, You can't prove that the past wasn't like this, can you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so you can actually go to each, like, Aeon's path. Okay, that's pretty sick. It's also developed a path space for the express purpose of enhancing the resonance between trailblazers and the paths. As a trailblazer, every action you take that aligns with your path during exploration can help you to obtain path energy. Okay. You closer to the eon. The thing that's going to be crazy about all these events is that when we get closer to all of them for Honkai take a long time. Sufficient path energy, you'll be able to unlock specific buffs and the chance to interact directly with the corresponding eon, <laughs> thereby uncovering their part in the swarm disaster. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, so we've been hearing those words a lot, but none of this feels swarmish or disastery enough to me. Mm, say no more. <laughs> Swarm. In the domain of the third plane of each exploration, trailblazers will encounter a brand new enemy. The Swarm True Sting. Mm -hmm. True stings have the ability to divide and create more swarms. If not dealt with promptly, the entire battlefield will eventually be overrun by the swarm. Sufficiently swarming? Oh. Suitably disaster -y? Oh my god, that's just one turn and there's already five. Creeps just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, upon clearing simulated universe, whoa, 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 whoa. disaster. The brand new path of propagation will be unlocked within the simulated universe. Propagation? Hey, yo! We got a new path! So that means we're gonna get characters for that path. Take note. Aside from Stella Jade and numerous other materials, the small disaster rewards include two self modeling resins. Those things are rarer than rare. So we're going to get three self-molding resins between just these two events. encourage trailblazers to give it a go. What? Next up is the Space Station Task Force event. Revitalizing the Space Station okay. is no small So this is going to be a smaller event on the side, it looks like. We'll need to enlist the help of a task force with special permissions. Watson has lined up all the assignments that require attention. Over to you, Trailblazers. <laughs> During the event, okay. assembling a team that meets the requirements of specific assignments, you'll be able to earn rewards such as Stellar Jade and character experience materials. <laughs> and as the message makes clear, there will be requests and assignments. Okay, so it's just another like daily like mission thing. Yes, Planner Fissure's coming back again. Let's go. Okay, okay. During the respective events. And Garden of Plenty. All right, Ben. Let's go. Can earn you a set amount of double reward. Yes, sir. At the same time, version 1.3 will unlock two new stagnant shadow stages, Shape of Puppetry and Shape of Abomination. Okay. The former will drop Suppressing Edict, essential material required for Don Hong and Vibrator Lune. The latter will drop Nail of the Ape. Ascension material required for Fushui. Okay, makes sense. All that too? Makes sense. Oh, and I'm not done with you yet. Oh, snap. 1.3 system updates are just as momentous. First off, after the version 1.3 update, the Trailblaze <laughs> Power Cap will be raised from 180. Let's go. We already knew that was going to happen, boys and girls. But the fact that we're also seeing it is fantastic. Okay. Once Trailblaze Power Max is out, a percentage of the surplus is converted into reserve Trailblaze Power. Ah, so in other words, if you forget to log on, you won't have wasted much Trailblaze Power. Beautiful. Beautiful. The 1.3 update will also bring changes to the friends and chat systems. Okay. Which include being able to sort your friends. And Trailblazers not currently accepting new friend requests can choose to disable them. Okay. Eyes it on the cake. You can now send emojis in chats. 
Uh, I dig the emojis. The pom -pom and March 7th emojis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. Fingers crossed for some authentic boomer material. <laughs> <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. Of course, we have the crowd favorite. Gift of Let's go, baby! For seven days gets you ten warps. Crowd favorite because every update has it, baby. That's how we do. Gift of Odyssey. Honkai Star Rail okay. will also be a part of this year's Gamescom. Mm -hmm. what? what surprising updates await us? Watch this Space Trailblazers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. Nice. Let's roll out today's final redemption code. Let's get the last one, baby. Okay, so lots of cool stuff to talk about right there. I'm pretty stoked on the events again. And the reason why I say that is because of what we're going to get out of them. That's the biggest thing for me is that there's so many good things coming from the events. And I think that in all honesty, that's one of the things that Honkai Star Rail has going for it compared to other Hoyoverse games. The amount of rewards and the rewards that you get are fantastic. We're getting three self-molding uh, resin, which is fantastic. We're getting a ma like a massive update to the resin system in general, which goes from 180 to 240. And we also get a percentage of our resin after, or not resin, but trailblaze power capped out will go into a reserved pool that's bonkers and customization stuff for your backgrounds like for your phone it's it's ridiculous man it's ridiculous we've covered quite a bit about the 1.3 update any thoughts or feelings from our guests what are you most looking forward to Man, so much to choose from, mm -hmm. but for me, it's got to be the characters. <laughs> Don Hung and Bybiter Lune, Fu Xuan, and Lynx are all special in their own way. I just hope I get lucky with the warps. <laughs> <laughs> and as for me, I'm super excited about the simulated universe mm -hmm. update. The new gameplay and story aspects sound brilliant. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, since you guys covered the obvious, I'll go for something a little different. Mm. I feel like this version's quality of life enhancements are really good. They are really good. The trailblaze power cap they are really good, the sir. The trailblaze power feature. Uh, they may sound minor, but I think they'll make a big difference. They're the they're gonna make a big difference because that's more grinding, and I'll be able to actually do stuff. Proven as the updates keep rolling. <laughs> well. That's it for the Honkai Star Rail version 1.3 special program. All right, we got to make sure. As always, thanks again to all you Trailblazers for tuning in. I always make sure to tune in until the very, very end. Let's see it. Catch you later. See you next time. Bubble tea, bubble tea. Bubble tea. Oh, fun. Yeah. Bubble tea. He wants the bubble tea. Bravo. Another pretty dang good update, if I do say so myself. Now, the reason why I say that is the characters look really, really good. I do need to read up on Lynx's stuff uh, because I do feel bad. I did have to really go to the bathroom. I felt I felt bad for that. But let, I, I want to read over Lynx's kit really quick just so I could give Lynx the proper... Uh, Proper attention she deserves. Uh, skill applies survival response to a single target ally and increases their max HP by 8.75 of Lynx's max HP plus 256. If the, uh, if the target is a character of the path of destruction or preservation, the chance of them being attacked by enemies will increase greatly. Survival response lasts for two turns. So that's one crucial thing about the skill is that if you have a destruction or pre uh, preservation, you do have... It gives them a chance of being hit so even more. Why don't we go oh, hold on. No, no, Tech Tone. No, no, no. Don't talk right now, buddy. I love you. But no, don't talk. Uh, and then, of course, we got the ultimate. Dispels one debuff from all allies and immediately restores the HP equal to 15.75% of Lynx's max HP plus 461. That's not bad. That's actually pretty decent. But the characters look really, really good. I'm pretty stoked on that. Um, the quality of life updates are really, really bog. I'm just saying, especially going from 180 trailblaze power to 240, having a uh, part of your capped resin go into a reserve pool after it's fully capped, which is freaking awesome. The amount of items that we're go going to be getting or rewards that we're going to be getting from the events, including a free sushang and three uh, mold or bleh, uh, molded resin, however you want to say it. 
is pretty dang good. Self-molding resin. That's what it was. Um, and just in general, it feels like they want us to actually summon on the game. They want us to try and summon. I think getting 10 free pulls is fantastic. Uh, and I think that they should keep on doing that. So, uh, but that's going to be it for this this recording. Sorry, I'm very, very tired. Had a lot of stuff happen today. But that's going to be it for this recording. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And let me know in the comments, are you excited for version 1.3? Uh, again, very sorry if it seemed like I was very stoic. I was enjoying it. I think that there's a lot of stuff coming for it. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it. Love you all to death. And as always, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Please take care. Be safe, y'all.